Hello, welcome to Casual Veteran Gamer. In the video today, I'll give my review for Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance. First and foremost, I've had fun playing it, and overall I'm happy that I bought the game. Though, that's not to say that it's without its problems. At the time of making this video, I've had a, somewhere around 35 hours of playtime, and I've played through all the acts with Drizzt to gotten to level 20. I've dabbled with the other characters, but not past the first few levels, so do keep this in mind when listening to my review. I'll start off by going over some of the major problems first, before moving on to more positive aspects of the game. First of all, there are some bugs. I have found some random visual bugs, which could be to do with graphics, but I've also found some of the, the HUD information is just wrong. Like for example, one time, or a couple of times playing as Drizzt, got silenced, Stop being silenced, but my skills recharging on the left hand side of the screen, I couldn't see it, it was as if I was still silenced. Also, playing as Katy Bree, her charge attacks sometimes just don't register. So, you've maybe done one charge attack and you're trying to charge up another attack, and it just doesn't happen. And you've got to do it all over again, which is particularly annoying actually. Also, I found playing as Drizzt that one time I was doing the combo for one particular move, but then Drizzt ended up doing a different one, and this was multiple times in a row. I definitely was doing the right combo, but this only happened once, I don't know what happens to be honest. Secondly, the game is currently well known for having quite bad AI. A particular sticking point for many, many people is that as soon as you're out of their range of them being able to see you, they just ignore you. So you can use your ranged attacks, and obviously this is strongest with Katibri. You can just attack and attack and attack and the enemies just stand there doing nothing. And thirdly, the third major thing that I dislike about the game is the online matchmaking. So after choosing to join an online game, you're put with random people with seemingly no regard given to the levels of the players involved. So this really easily leads to groups where one person could be level 20 on their character and they're carrying the rest of the group, even if it's just one other person, the other person could be level one. And so you end up one person doing all the work, other people just keep on dying and just have to be revived all the time. Secondly, I found this isn't so much a problem with the game, and the game could put something in to fix this, it's more to do with the people playing the game, is that you join a group and the person in charge of the session is AFK, but it's not there. And you wait and wait and you wait and just nothing happens. When I'm in this situation, I really don't wait very long. You can normally tell this is happening because they're either in the start position when you log in or maybe they're standing at the position after you finish the level. Obviously, they've gone away to do something. What I think the game could do is maybe put in some sort of timer. So if you're putting in no keyboard or mouse inputs for, uh, let's say, three minutes, you get kicked out of the game. That's my own personal view because it's really easy to join another game. There's no big deal if you get kicked out. Next up, I'm going to go over a list of things which are maybe a bit more to do with personal preference, but I would very much like improved. And they're not really game-breaking necessarily like the previous things. That would be nice if something was changed about them. First of all, after getting to a high level, getting common, uncommon, and even rare items is kind of... It's disappointing. There's almost no point to them. Yeah, you can go ahead and sell them, but this becomes a chore every time you do this because it takes... You have to hold down the button to sell an item, which then kind of leads on to the next thing. Is like towards the higher levels, gold becomes pointless anyway. It's a non-issue. I mean, it can have hundreds of thousands of gold, and you're really not using up very much of it. When you're playing through the lower levels and mid-levels, buying your moves makes gold useful, upgrading your consumables, upgrading your items. But once you start farming for a particular set or particular item, you rack up gold and upgrade crystals really very quickly. And it just, they don't feel like a reward anymore. So it'd be nice if gold had another use or maybe just give a bit less gold towards the end. I can see that being maybe not a good idea. One thing I'd love to be able to do is respect my attributes maybe give a use to the gold. There's no current way to respect your attributes and once you've made a decision at a level, you're stuck. Your feats, by the way, if anyone watching, by the time you get to level 20, you can get all your feats. Obviously, playing the lower levels, you have to choose and pick, which is kind of nice, right? It's part of RPGs and stuff. But by level 20, you can get all the feats. And lastly, as a, mainly as a just player, getting the backstab to work, especially when playing with the team, is really difficult. Cause, and this is important for Drizzt because it's one of two ways to help set up a team attack. You can, for Drizzt, very quickly, you have to stun an enemy, walk around the bar behind them, and then tap the light attack button. If you're in the middle of a combo and they get stunned, you waste your opportunity. The amount of time available to be able to backstab an enemy is relatively low. If you don't move around very quickly, they come out of the stun. And thirdly, the bit to do with playing as a team, you can stun an enemy, start walking around the back, then you've got Katibri in the background, firing arrows, knocks the enemy and makes them unstunned, knocks them out of place, and you can't use your team attack. It'd be nice if there was another way or made it easier to get the backstab. And lastly, I'm going to go over the things that I like. And although this list is a bit shorter in length than the previous two sections, 
to me, they're far more important. And this goes, the first thing goes back to the very first thing I said about the game, is for me, the combat is fun. It feels good to learn what combos work best, what moves are good, and taking down more difficult enemies through a thought out combination of skills. Not every character will be for every player, though uh, I personally don't really like playing as Katy Bree. I kind of find it a bit boring, and I just don't like the way she moves around and stuff. But I love being in the mixed mix of the enemies with Drizzt, slicing, dicing, and dodging around. It felt good. Secondly, I really like getting new loot and trying harder difficulties and leveling up, right, the rewards that you get from playing a game. This part of the game reminds me of Diablo, where you get we try to get certain sets or legendary items, and then once you get them, maybe you can, or you can also farm to try and get particular stats on particular items for your build. Playing with other people once you get a group, I think is really, really fun, and definitely feels like this is how the game is really designed to be played. You've got the addition of team attacks, which you can't do at all when you're playing solo. And secondly, you get the ability to revive each other. And again, can't be done solo in solo. Once you're down, that's it. You gotta go back and start that level again. But as a team, you've got this chance, and this is really helpful when you're playing against bosses. Uh, you've got the chance to help each other out, make sure everyone gets gets back up. You can fight the, the enemy again. And I can imagine if you've got a group of four, four mates, this would be a really, really fun game to play. And lastly, I enjoyed watching the cutscenes. Even if this isn't the greatest story ever told. I probably won't watch them all again. I know it sounds bad, but I also wasn't inclined to skip them. I didn't feel bored by them. And I'm happy that they're there. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm happy with my purchase, but this won't be the game for everyone. And I can really understand people being put off by the downsides that I've mentioned. And there probably are other downsides other people feel exist, and that's fine. What I've mentioned in this video is just what came to my mind, first of all, and after a bit of thinking, and the main points to me about this game. It's currently a bit rough around the edges so do keep this in mind if you're thinking about buying the game or not and if you're kind of on the fence not quite sure probably wait until a patch comes out if this looks like the sort of game for you you like this type of the style of game the genre of game i'd say definitely go ahead buy it you'll love it uh, for anyone who wants a numerical rating say a uh, five out of seven i mean yeah i know who gives a rating out of seven but i'd rather the pros and cons that i've listed give you an idea of what i do and don't like about the game rather than some arbitrary value that I give to it. Thank you for making it this far, and if you've played the game, let me know what you thought of the game, and whether you think I'm way off the mark or not. That's it for this video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.